Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, the show where we open the door to what's happening deep within you. At that microscopic level, most of us only consider when a particularly annoying virus shows up. I'm Ethan Foster. Some say I've got the comedic timing of a snail on a roller coaster, but hey, I do try. And I'm Alara Sky, the quick-witted voice who tries her hardest to keep Ethan from drifting into philosophical tangents about lint or the subtle differences between free-range and cage-free eggs. I'm here to keep us focused, keep us sharp, and add just a pinch of pithy commentary. A pinch of commentary? You're sure it's not a generous ladle? Oh, you want portion control, do you? Fine. I'll keep the commentary to a dessert spoon then. But keep in mind, by the end of this episode, it might feel more like a bottomless pitcher. Because I've been reading about fiber. Yes, fiber. That dietary puzzle piece your mother always told you to eat more of. Turns out fiber isn't just for keeping you tidy. It's the superhero of your gut, complete with epigenetic sidekicks. That's right. We're talking about a study that links fiber consumption to epigenetic changes with anti-cancer effects. It's the kind of research that makes me wonder, have we humans underestimated those bowls of broccoli and Brussels sprouts all this time? Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, beans, you name it. If it's fibrous and your chewing muscles start staging a protest, it's probably good for you. I was reading this paper that suggested fiber influences gene expression. You know what that means, right? That I have to think about how the things I eat rewrite my personal code? I guess you could say my morning oatmeal might be the best software update I've installed in a while. Exactly. Now. Epigenetics is basically how certain factors, like food, can turn genes on or off without altering the DNA sequence itself. Think of it like the volume knob on your car radio. You're still playing the same radio station, but you might be blaring it or whispering it, depending on what your body needs. I like that analogy. So fiber is like a helpful friend who sneaks into your car and politely adjusts the volume. Or maybe it's the friend who knows exactly which station to tune to so that your daily commute is less road rage, more zen enlightenment. Researchers have started to pay attention to how fiber can create beneficial changes that might reduce cancer risks. It's fascinating stuff. You eat fiber, your gut microbiota loves you, they produce certain compounds, and those compounds can affect your gene expression. Right, we've all heard about short-chain fatty acids like butyrate. If the gut is the party hall, butyrate is the VIP pass. It does all sorts of good things, like support the cells in your colon. Some folks say it can influence your immune system or even your mood. Yeah, butyrate's a small but mighty molecule. In the epigenetic world, it's got a big reputation because it can inhibit histone deacetylases. Basically, it helps keep genes that fight cancer in the on position. You know, like a diligent coworker who stops the office clown from messing with the light switches. So, the clown in this scenario would be any mechanism or environmental factor that tries to turn the good genes off. But fiber, in the form of beauty rate, steps in and says, Not today, bozo. We're keeping these anti-cancer genes active. Precisely. This isn't to say that if you eat a bucket of psyllium husk, you magically shield yourself from every ailment. But it does highlight that fiber is more than just filler. It's a catalyst for a whole bunch of metabolic and gene-related processes. I'm imagining some heroic cartoon carrot brimming with fiber, flexing its arms and wagging a finger at tumors. Stay back, fiends. My epigenetic powers are unstoppable. Now that would be a superhero movie I'd pay to see. Meanwhile, I'd be the sidekick explaining the origin story. As a humble root vegetable, Carrot Man discovered he could harness the power of short-chain fatty acids. Now, no malignant cell is safe. Let's talk a little more about that study, though. From what I gather, the researchers found that individuals consuming higher levels of fiber saw certain beneficial changes in gene expression, profiles relevant to tumor suppression. It's not just about raw quantity, but also about the type of fiber and how it's fermented in the gut. Yes, different fibers can do different things. Soluble fiber, found in oats, legumes, and some fruits, tends to ferment and produce those lovely short-chain fatty acids. Insoluble fiber, like what you get from wheat bran and vegetables, helps keep things moving. Both are important. It's like having both a traffic cop and a cleaning crew in your gut. Each does a distinct job to keep the city running smoothly. I'm going to guess that in the future, we might see more personalized nutrition, like DNA-specific fiber blends. Some nutritionist will say, ah, Ethan, your gene expression suggests you need more barley and fewer white potatoes. You're probably onto something. Personalized diets are already trending, but I think we'll get even more fine-tuned as time goes on. Of course, the big takeaway is that fiber's not just a side dish. It could be a key player in your body's attempts to keep malignant cells at bay. On a personal note, I've noticed that every time I increase my fiber intake, I feel more energetic, and my stomach protests less. If that's not a direct testament to fibers might, I don't know what is. Just remember, though, if you suddenly triple your fiber from zero to hero, your digestive system might stage a revolution. Gradual changes, people. Otherwise, your gut might think you fed it a shock diet of raw tree bark. We want to avoid shocking the gut. So, small steps. That's ironically the same advice I give when climbing stairs. It's all connected. Mind, body, stairs, fiber intake. It's the circle of life. But the epicenter is that fiber can tweak our epigenome. 
And since many types of cancer are influenced by gene expression changes, you can see how that might be a big deal. Definitely. Let's break down the epigenome for a moment. If DNA is your book of life, epigenetics involves bookmarks, highlights, and sticky notes. Fiber might come along and highlight the important anti-cancer paragraphs, making sure you don't skip them. That's a perfect illustration. And then there are other factors, stress, toxins, lifestyle, that might put big black marks over those same paragraphs, or even toss the entire book in a dusty attic. We want to avoid letting those negative influences overshadow the beneficial ones. Fiber is one of the helpful librarians sorting the volumes in our bodily library. I like the library analogy. Now, I'm curious about practical ways we can incorporate this knowledge. For instance, someone who's primarily a meat and potatoes person might shift to including more leafy greens, more legumes, or even adding a daily green smoothie. Right. And while there's nothing wrong with the occasional steak, balancing it with fibrous foods can support that beneficial gut environment. That environment, in turn, can have these epigenetic ripple effects. It's a holistic chain reaction. So, if I were to sum up the big picture, doctor, Mercola's perspective, or really any integrative health perspective, would say that when we consistently give our bodies fiber-rich foods, we're not only fueling ourselves well, we're also giving the gut microbiome the ammunition to produce beneficial compounds like butyrate, which can help tune up our gene expression. Over time, that might reduce the risk of certain cancers. Exactly. Dr. Mercola's been advocating for an approach that respects the body's natural wisdom. Fiber is one piece of that puzzle. In modern diets, it's often overlooked or overshadowed by the next big fad. But the research is increasingly clear. Fiber's a heavy hitter in the epigenetic game. A wise friend once told me, sometimes the simplest solution is the best. And you can't get simpler than fiber, right? It's in plants, it's in fruits. It's basically the stuff we've been stepping over since civilization began. I suppose that wise friend wasn't referencing your comedic approach, though. That's rarely the simplest solution. I do like to run in circles before landing a punchline. Let's be real, it's my style. But you see how I can be thorough. Thorough is a good word for it. Speaking of thorough, the study in question is thorough in highlighting multiple genes associated with tumor suppression and how they seem more active when we have a healthy intake of fiber. It's like shining a spotlight on your body's built-in defense team and telling them, yes, do your job and do it well. This might be the best pep talk I've ever heard for vegetables. My kale will be so proud the next time I put it in a blender. Just make sure you have some fruit in there too. Otherwise, kale smoothies taste like liquid grass clippings. Indeed, lesson learned. Let's pivot slightly. People often ask, does epigenetics mean we can fix everything with diet? That's an oversimplification. Our genes are shaped by more than just diet. But diet is a big piece, especially in terms of gut health. And gut health can set the tone for inflammation levels, immune responses, even how we metabolize hormones. All of that can have an effect on tumor formation. If your gut's in chaos, your immune system might get confused start focusing on the wrong tasks, and let certain cells slip by. Which is exactly what we don't want. So let's champion fiber for a moment. In a world of ephemeral diet trends, keto, paleo, carnivore, fiber remains a consistent, evidence-backed staple. You can do those diets in ways that still honor fiber, by the way. It's not an either-or. Right. But ironically, a lot of fad diets forget about fiber, or inadvertently reduce it, which might negate some of the potential benefits. So it's always about balance. If you're going to do keto, for instance, load up on fibrous, low-carb veggies. If you're exploring paleo, don't skip the leafy greens. Let's talk about the fiber we find in fruit. People sometimes fear the sugar in fruit, but a lot of fruit also has beneficial fiber that can slow down sugar absorption and support gut health at the same time. Precisely. An apple a day might not literally keep every disease away, but it sure keeps your gut microbes entertained. And if they're happy, they generate beneficial substances your cells appreciate. It's a chain reaction, a domino effect. The study also mentions that these epigenetic changes can be somewhat long-lasting, but we need to maintain them with consistent dietary habits. You can't just eat fiber one day and say, all right, genes, do your thing, I'm out. Right. Your genes aren't that gullible. They're paying attention every day, taking notes. If you have an off day, that's fine. It's about patterns over time. Let's look at it as an ongoing conversation between your gut and your genes. That's a comforting thought, that our bodies are so adaptive, but it also means we have to be mindful of what we put in them. If we feed them well, we can get epigenetic perks, like possibly lowering cancer risk. If we feed them poorly, we can push genes into less favorable expressions. It's a double-edged sword. Indeed. Now there are other lifestyle factors too. Sleep, exercise, stress management. Fiber is just one piece, but it's a simple piece to incorporate if we make a conscious choice. You don't have to revamp everything overnight. Small steps, like adding a salad to lunch or substituting a snack with a piece of fruit, can start shifting that epigenetic dial. I'm reminded of the old phrase, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Fiber is definitely an ounce of prevention, just in daily increments measured in grams, ironically enough. Absolutely. And for those who think fiber is boring, let's just rename it epigenetic fuel. Doesn't that sound more exciting? It does. 
I'm about to have my morning epigenetic fuel. Exactly. Add a bit of flair to your daily routine, because let's be honest, half the battle is marketing. If you call fiber lifeless husks, no one's jumping on that bandwagon. But if you label it cancer-fighting superfood, you get a little more attention. True. But the difference is that the hype here has some science behind it. We're not talking about a magic pill. We're talking about a well-documented aspect of nutrition that resonates with the body's innate mechanisms. Couldn't have put it better myself. Well-documented, well-studied, and definitely worth including in your daily menu. Now, let's circle back to Dr. Mercola's perspective. He's long advocated for whole foods, nutrient density, healthy fats, and of course, high quality fiber. The synergy of these elements helps your body function optimally. This study simply adds another layer, showing how fiber can literally alter gene expression. When you think about it, that's huge. Changing gene expression used to sound like science fiction. Now we know it's a natural part of how we respond to the environment. Precisely. We interact with food every day. It's one of the primary ways we shape our internal environment. If you're going to choose between shaping it with empty calories or shaping it with nutrient-dense, fiber-rich foods, I think the choice becomes clear. Exactly. And folks shouldn't feel discouraged if they haven't been the best at including fiber. Start small, toss some flax seeds on your oatmeal, add an extra serving of veggies to dinner, swap white bread for a whole grain option. Over time, those changes can mount up. And your body might just thank you in ways you don't notice immediately, but your cells sure do. They'll reward you with more stable gene expression, possibly lower inflammation, maybe even better energy levels. It's a wonderful message. You have a say in how your genes behave, and fiber is one of your best negotiation tactics. You're basically telling your body, I'm investing in you, so please invest in me. That might be the best explanation of epigenetics I've heard so far. Instead of a standoff, it's a partnership. And who doesn't love a good partnership? Especially one that says, let's team up to reduce cancer risk. That's a partnership we can all get behind. So let's recap for our lovely listeners. Today's big theme is that fiber, especially from whole food sources, can create epigenetic changes. These changes may help our cells battle the formation of tumors. In short, fiber is more than a digestive champion. It's an ally for your genes. Yep, and it's not just one type of fiber or one magical fruit. It's the overall habit of including whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and legumes in your diet. Variety ensures you're feeding multiple strains of beneficial gut bacteria, which in turn produce short-chain fatty acids like butyrate to help keep certain anti-cancer genes switched on. A well-orchestrated symphony in the gut. I find that so poetic. The next time I stare at a plate of broccoli, I'll know it's not just a mundane pile of green. It's a potential gene whisperer. That's the spirit. And a gene whisperer that can taste pretty good with garlic and olive oil, I might add. Now you're making me hungry. But yes, let's remember that healthy doesn't have to mean bland. Spices, herbs, cooking techniques, you can make fiber-rich meals taste fantastic, and your cells will appreciate the effort. If you confuse taste and health benefits, you're golden, or kale green, whichever color you prefer. All right, folks, we've reached that time where we remind you your epigenome is listening. If you want to turn up the anti-cancer volume, fiber is your backstage pass. Let's celebrate the simple shift of adding more whole, fibrous foods to our plates. Well said, Ethan. You've definitely given me a new tagline for fiber. It's not just roughage. It's your body's backstage pass. Catchy. I try. Anyway, that wraps up our chat on this compelling study about fiber and epigenetics. We hope you learned something new about how your daily food choices can influence your cellular destiny and do so in a comedic, illuminating fashion. Thanks for tuning in to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Until next time, folks, keep that gut happy, those cells humming, and your sense of humor intact. Life's too short not to laugh and too precious not to feed ourselves well. I'm Ethan Foster, your friendly observer, signing off with a fresh appreciation for fiber. And I'm Alara Sky, reminding you that intelligence plus humor is a powerful combo, especially when it's fueled by fiber. Stay curious, stay healthy, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Take care, everyone.